Hello, today I will tell you about the Russian stealth drone, S-70 Hunter. The general public learned about this UAV in 2024, though it had been discussed much earlier. Phrases like, unparalleled in the world, better than any other similar drone, built with unique technologies unmatched globally, are often used in the context of the Hunter. However, while much about the S-70 remains classified, it's clear that the drone is not as exceptional as official statements suggest. And yes, there are analogs, not only in the US, but also in China and Iran, which have become renowned for their ability to replicate designs. In this review, I'll tell you what the Hunter is all about, its global counterparts, and why serial production of this UAV is unlikely to begin anytime soon, despite the announcements. Before I start, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and click like. It helps us create better content. Let's burn! The idea of developing a stealth UAV in Russia was first announced in 2009 at the MOX 2009 airshow, and the reasoning behind this ambition was clear at the time. In 2007, the US unveiled its stealth UAV, the RQ-170 Sentinel, though its first known operational deployment in Afghanistan was carried out secretly. From that year, the UAV entered serial production. Designed as a flying wing, the Sentinel represented a new era in UAV development, focusing on making these systems undetectable to enemy radar. The Sentinel was next used publicly in 2009, its existence was well known in Russia and worldwide, and the announcement to pursue a similar project in Russia was likely a reaction to this advancement. Despite the initial announcement in 2009, the contract to develop Russia's stealth UAV wasn't signed until 2012 with the Suhoi Design Bureau, shortly OKB Suhoi. Suhoi became the main developer of the S-70 Hunter, but various subcontractors contributed to the drone's components and systems. A pivotal event that may have pushed Russia to start work on the S-70 occurred in 2011. During an operation in Afghanistan, the US lost an RQ-170 Sentinel. The drone disappeared from radar, only to reappear later as a trophy on Iranian television. Reports suggest that Iran likely used electronic warfare systems to manipulate the GPS signal and force the drone to land. This left Iran with an almost intact Sentinel, providing them access to cutting-edge American stealth UAV technology. Not surprisingly, Iran decided to reverse-engineer the captured drone. The result was the Shahed-171, a stealth UAV with a flying wing design. Iran later produced several UAV models based on the same concept. In 2018, one of these drones was shot down by Israel, confirming their operational presence in Iran's arsenal. In the 2000s, another American company, Northrop Grumman, began work on a stealth UAV known as the X-47, which later evolved into the X-47B. Only a few prototypes of the X-47B were built, but its design significantly influenced global UAV development. China for example based its CH-7 stealth UAV on the X-47B. The CH-7, also a flying wing UAV, was unveiled at a Chinese exhibition in 2018. With these developments, the Russian decision to pursue its own stealth UAV was a logical move, especially as global competitors like the US, China, and Iran advanced their capabilities. However, delays in contracts, design challenges, and global trends in UAV development show that the S-70 Hunter is part of a larger, competitive landscape rather than the unique, unparalleled system it is sometimes claimed to be. In the 2000s, Boeing also developed its own flying wing UAV, the X-45, of which only a few units were built. Additionally, Israel has a stealth UAV known as the RA-01, developed with direct support from the United States, including financial backing and technological assistance. These examples demonstrate that calling the S-70 Hunter unique and unparalleled is a significant overstatement. There are numerous analogs worldwide, and I've only named a few. But let's return to the focus of this review. In 2011, media reports indicated that all project participants were ready to begin work. However, the official contract wasn't signed until 2012, marking the formal start of the S-70 Hunters' development. The project was shrouded in secrecy to prevent any leaks to adversaries. But why was such a UAV necessary? Was it simply part of the ongoing arms race, or did it have more specific goals? If we look at today's situation, large and bulky drones like the MQ-9 Reaper, Bayraktar TB-2, or even the Sentinel have lost much of their relevance. Stealth UAVs no longer possess the level of invisibility they did a decade ago. 
Smaller, cheaper drones can now perform the same reconnaissance and strike missions effectively. Moreover, advancements in electronic warfare systems and modern radars have made it easier to detect such UAVs. Once detected, their survival is often short-lived. The military conflicts since 2022 have drastically shifted the approach to warfare, and large, expensive UAVs are no longer the best solution on the battlefield. They are costly, have limited survivability, and face significant operational risks. However, in 2012, such developments were not yet apparent. The S-70 project began primarily to keep pace with U.S. advancements in this domain. At the same time, Russia was continuing work on the Su-57 fifth-generation fighter. As the Hunter project progressed, its role was tied increasingly to the Su-57 fighter. The rationale was that the S-70 would act as a force multiplier for the Su-57, operating in a complementary role. Equipped with advanced radar, the S-70 could detect ground targets, including enemy air defense systems, long before the Su-57 entered their engagement range. Armed with anti-radar missiles, the S-70 could neutralize enemy radars, paving the way for the Su-57 to strike remaining launchers without depleting its arsenal or exposing itself to unnecessary risk. To achieve this synergy, the S-70 was designed with significant overlap in components with the Su-57, such as sharing the same engine and landing gear, to streamline production and maintenance. While this justification emerged later in the development process, it highlights a shift in how the S-70 was envisioned, not as an independent strike platform, but as a wingman to enhance the capabilities and survivability of the Su-57. This approach reflects an adaptation to the evolving nature of modern warfare, even if the initial impetus for the S-70's creation was rooted in older concepts of UAV design and functionality. The first prototype of the S-70 Hunter was completed only in 2018, though initial plans aimed for readiness by 2016. The delays were understandable, given Russia's lack of the necessary electronic component base and advanced technologies used by the US to develop their similar UAVs. It took time to build up these capabilities. Initially, the Hunter was envisioned as a flying wing UAV with a maximum takeoff weight of up to 20 tons and the ability to carry up to 5 tons of payload. However, the lack of key technologies worked against these goals. The maximum takeoff weight had to be increased to 25 tons, making the drone heavier, which ultimately impacted its maximum flight speed. In 2018, the first prototype of the S-70 Hunter was completed and sent for ground testing. During these tests, the UAV conducted taxiing trials on the runway. These tests evaluated its ability to accelerate to takeoff speed and brake effectively during landing, ensuring the system's reliability in critical phases of operation. This phase was a crucial step in validating the basic mechanics and controls of the prototype before its first flight. The Hunter took to the air for the first time in 2019, remaining airborne for 20 minutes before landing successfully. Later that year, another significant test was conducted. The S-70 flew alongside the Su-57 fighter jet. This test evaluated the feasibility of controlling the UAV from the Su-57's cockpit. The concept of a command and control hub for operating the UAV was central to its design. The ability to control the Hunter directly from the Su-57 was envisioned as a way to enhance its operational flexibility and expand its combat capabilities. After these tests, several modifications were made to the prototype, and it was sent back for additional trials. By 2021, another prototype in its baseline configuration had been completed. Two significant milestones occurred that year. First, the Hunter successfully dropped a CAB 500 guided bomb, which hit its target accurately. This demonstrated the UAV's capability to deploy guided bombs and suggested future potential for carrying various types of missiles. Second, an upgraded version of the Hunter was created. This version incorporated significant improvements, which will be discussed later. These developments marked a shift from conceptual testing to more practical demonstrations of the Hunter's combat potential. The integration with the Su-57 and its ability to deliver precision strikes underscored its intended role as a highly capable companion to manned fighters in modern warfare. What is the S-70 Hunter in general? The airframe is made of composite materials. It is equipped with a single AL-41F1S bypass turbofan engine, the same engine used on the Su-35S. The wingspan is 19 meters, and the drone's length is 14 meters. Its maximum takeoff weight is 25 tons, with a payload capacity ranging from 2 to 2.8 tons. Some sources claim the payload capacity is between 6 and 8 tons, 
but this is likely misinformation. Given its weight and design, it cannot carry 8 tons of payload in the form of bombs and missiles. The drone has a maximum flight range of up to 6,000 kilometers and can reach an altitude of up to 18 kilometers. Its maximum speed depends on altitude and can reach up to 900 kilometers per hour. Another piece of misinformation suggests the hunter can fly at speeds of up to 1,400 km per hour. However, considering its weight, construction, and design, its maximum speed cannot exceed 1,000 km per hour, and most experts agree that 900 km per hour is the realistic limit. As for its onboard systems, much remains undisclosed. It is known that two optical electronic sensors are mounted underneath the nose, allowing image transmission to the control station. However, Details about its radar system, jamming systems, and guidance systems are unknown. The drone uses the GLONASS satellite system for control. It has been announced that various radars can be installed, enabling the drone to act as an aerial radar for target detection. It can also be used for target illumination and designation, including guiding missiles employed by the Su-57. Additionally, it can function as an electronic warfare system. Regarding armament, the internal bay is estimated to accommodate up to four free-fall bombs such as the CAB-500 or FAB-500, or bombs equipped with UMPC kits. Potentially, it could carry up to eight FAB-250 or CAB-250 bombs. It has also been stated that it will support air-to-air, -air, air air-to-surface, and anti-radiation missiles. While several potential missiles have been named, experts generally agree that the total weight of bombs and missiles the hunter can carry is unlikely to exceed two tons. There is also speculation about the possibility of external hardpoints, but this would reduce the drone's flight speed. The S-70 is controlled from a ground control station, which consists of two containers. The first container houses all the communication equipment, while the second accommodates the operator. The operator's controls are identical to those of the Su-57. On the right-hand side, there is a joystick. In front of the operator are two monitors displaying images from the drone's sensors, along with three additional displays showing all the drone's operational data, similar to the Su-57 cockpit interface. It was reported that the hunter's first combat deployment occurred in 2023. Media sources claimed it dropped bombs over Ukraine. However, even the publicly shared video evidence has left some skeptical about the accuracy of these claims. A confirmed deployment took place in 2024, when the S-70, accompanied by Su-57, was sighted over Ukraine. Reportedly, Ukrainian forces used electronic warfare systems to disrupt the signal, causing the drone to lose control. This incident mirrors what happened to the American Sentinel drone over Afghanistan. To prevent the drone from falling into Ukrainian hands, a decision was made to destroy it using a missile fired from the accompanying Su-57. This was successfully carried out, and the drone's remnants were recovered by Ukrainian forces, confirming it was the hunter. Two highly classified developments, one American and one Russian, ended up being intercepted, one in Afghanistan and the other in Ukraine. Several Russian military analysts have suggested that in the future, entire swarms of hunter drones could be deployed to destroy enemy air defense systems. Some have proposed that a single Su-57 could simultaneously control four or even five hunters. Others speculate about launching up to 20 hunter drones accompanied by three Su-57s to effectively complete any ground strike mission. The idea involves integrating artificial intelligence and an improved communication system, enabling control of the drones from a Su-57 at distances of 200 to 400 kilometers, staying out of the range of enemy air defenses. This would create a versatile weapon system capable of addressing many tactical challenges, preserving the lives of pilots, and reducing the risk to the advanced Su-57 fighters. However, there are questions about how a single Su-57 pilot could manage both their aircraft and multiple drones simultaneously. While it would make sense for a dedicated weapons operator to handle the drones, this is not currently the case. Even though the Hunter is not highly maneuverable and cannot evade incoming missiles as a fighter jet can, it would still be challenging for one person to effectively manage both their aircraft and several drones. Considering the recent incident where a drone was lost, it's clear there is still much room for improvement. Another issue is the cost and quantity of these drones. Currently, the Russian Aerospace Forces have fewer than five S-700 drones. It is confirmed that there are two in their basic configuration, with a round exhaust nozzle. Although, after the loss of one over Ukraine, only one remains. There is also one improved drone with a rectangular exhaust nozzle. 
The cost of a single S70 is estimated to be between $10 million and $15 million, excluding the ground control station, which is even more expensive. The drone's high cost raises concerns about its cost effectiveness. The same bombs equipped with UMPC kits could be dropped from Su 57s or even earlier generation aircraft. The missiles it can carry could also be deployed from more maneuverable aircraft. Using the Hunter as bait or an additional weapons platform to conserve the Su 57's payload seems questionable, expensive, and impractical, especially if the drone fails to reach the target area. There is, however, an improved version of the drone to consider. In 2021, an improved version of the Hunter drone was unveiled. It featured a flat exhaust nozzle, designed to reduce radar cross-section and enhance stealth capabilities. However, this new design required a different engine, and the AL-51F1 engine, originally developed for the Su-57, was selected for the S-70 as well. With this engine, the Hunter is estimated to achieve a maximum speed of up to 1,400 km per hour and potentially cover greater distances. Additionally, plans include equipping this version with artificial intelligence, enabling it to continue missions even if communication with the operator is lost. Another noteworthy feature is the use of 3D printing for certain structural components, including the exhaust nozzle. This approach not only speeds up production but also reduces costs. Although serial production of this drone was initially anticipated to begin by the end of 2024, this has not yet occurred. The Hunter still faces numerous challenges, and the feasibility of its mass production remains unclear. And that concludes our overview of the S-70 Hunter drone. I hope you found this video interesting and informative. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and click like. Wishing you clear skies. Bye.